so we're gonna try this again. Hopefully she'll stay asleep. Her sock is coming off. Uh, but she's asleep. She's getting pretty big. She was awake and fussing, so hopefully she'll stay asleep now. I was oh look at the yawn. So cute. Uh I was just like halfway through explaining my birth story. And uh then the video decided to stop recording. And just totally messed up and wouldn't wouldn't record or not record. So I had to turn it off and take the battery out and here we go again. So this little girl is so cute. Okay, so this is a video about my birth story, as you saw in the title. So we'll just jump to it, <laughs> and hopefully it'll work. My video isn't the, my video camera isn't the best video camera out there. It's a Play Touch, Kodak Play Touch, I think. So if you look that up, it's a very small, uh, cheap camera. Anyway, um, so I don't remember all the times and all the details. Um, of what happened because it's she is now a month old as of two days ago um, she was born November 2nd at 9 15 p.m. and uh, it's now December 4th Christmas is really close Aww. and I am not ready at all mentally or physically in fact my, my Halloween Wreath is sitting over there, and I still have Halloween stuff, Halloween garland up there, and lots of stuff. All all that stuff in the basement is still there too. <laughs> anyway, so um, we went to the hospital Thursday night. I had an OB appointment, a OB appointment Thursday morning. I wasn't allowed to eat past three so after my appointment um, which is like 10 something I went to uh, Chipotle and had some got some lunch there and ate it here because um, I didn't work that day and then um, after Brett got off work we went to Walmart and sorry if I'm shaking if my uh, camera's shaking I'm shaking my leg um, we went to Walmart so Brett could get some snacks so he could eat while I was chilling because I couldn't eat at the hospital um, and then while we were at the hospital, or not the hospital, while we were at Walmart, his, uh, his stepmom called and asked if we wanted to go out to eat. So uh, after we left Walmart, we went to Steak and Shake with them. Um, I didn't eat, of course, because I couldn't eat. But the three of them ate, and I had some water, because I was allowed to have anything. The doctor said that pretty much anything that I could see through, I could have. Um, so I had water. And... Uh, I called the hospital to check about the time. They actually told me to come in a little later because they were going to have me go in like 7, 7.30. Uh, I think around, more around 7. And uh, they told me to wait until like 7.30 or 8 to come in because they had some C-sections scheduled. So we waited a little bit. Her sock is now off. <laughs> and went in. Um, I think it was closer to 8 by the time we went in. And um, I got all hooked up on the IV, which I did not like. I actually still have markings on my hands from the IV. Ugh. It doesn't hurt anymore, but I can still see like the red mark. I would show you, but it's on the hand that I'm currently holding the camera with. And my other hand is holding my baby. So there's that. Holding Gwen, who I... Holding Gwen. <laughs> um, so we went in, they got me all hooked up to the IV, and they... Um, we're going to slowly start the process of inducing me. So they put, um, they started me out in Pitocin, but very little, but they came in about every hour or so. I think it was like every hour. Um, it would go, my thing would go off indicating that they needed to come in, but I think they needed to come in, but it was just a reminder for them. Um, and they would come in and up the Pitocin a little bit, um, at four in the morning and by four in the morning. Um, they had come in and uh, gotten all my information, kind of like uh, checked me in or whatever. And uh, they had gotten blood work from me and uh, I had talked to the anesthesiologist. She had introduced herself and kind of gone over stuff with me. Um, so that had all happened sometime between when I got there and four after they got the IV and everything in. Um, four o'clock came and they started upping the Pitocin 
double what they had been doing. If you're hearing that, my daughter is currently filling her pants. <laughs> oh, but she's a very loud pooper. But anyway, they started upping it like double what they had been, which I don't know what they what the the dose was before or after that point, but even more than what be than before that they had started upping it uh, that much more. Um, and it stinks. <laughs> at four in the morning, um, at seven, around seven something in the morning, um, one of my OB doctors came in. Uh, thankfully, the girl, because it's much easier to get checked by a girl than to be checked by a guy down there. Um, so she came in and she ended up breaking my water. That was kind of the plan for when she came in, she was going to break my water. So she did that. Um, and they told me that once they break my water, things start moving faster. So they suggested that I that I request the epidural at that point because it takes an hour for them to be able to, like, uh, they have to put something in my um, IV to prepare me for that or something. Um, and it takes like an hour for that to go through. So, they, so like, especially if I started feeling any pain, they request, they suggested that I request the epidural because it would take an hour before I could get it in. Um, so I did. And they started that um, an hour later or whatever. Time went really fast. Um, and the anesthesiologist came up, um, and my nurse uh, and her were in the room. They took they had everybody else leave the room because um, I think Brett's parents, dad, and stepmom were there at the point at the time. Him and them and me were in the room, so there were four of us. And so they left her. They all left the room, and I think went to get breakfast or something. And uh, I don't remember what time it was. It was sometime after 7, maybe around like a 10 or 11. I don't remember. Maybe it was earlier than that. I don't know. But sometime later that morning. Um, so they came in and I always imagined getting epidural. You'd be like laying down on the bed and like turn set, turn like on your side. And they'd like give you the shot. Um, I don't know what exactly she did. But like back there. Because I didn't want to look. And I didn't want to see what she was using. But they had me sit up. And I, they started me out on, like, sitting Indian style on the bed, facing the side of the bed, um, like, the right side of the bed. And the nurse was in front of me, and the anesthesiologist was behind me with her tray of stuff. I didn't even want to look at it. <laughs> didn't want to think about what she was doing. I could, I just felt what she was doing, whatever it was. Lots of pokes and prods and stings and a little bit of pain, but just, like, central. Like, it was, like, just... I could just feel like where she was doing it. Um, and the nurse was in front of me kind of trying to soothe me and stuff and like help me like arch over. She said to like arch my back like a cat, like a, like a mad cat. <laughs> so I was trying to do that. Um, they ended up having to have me like dangle my feet down because it wasn't working the way they were trying or way we were trying. And she told me I could grab onto her if I wanted to. So I did because I kind of, because it was painful. And so she was like, the anesthesiologist was behind me putting like poking me and I don't know what else she was doing because I got poked a few times and I don't think she would like it was because she had to like redo it I think it was just like all the the process of doing it she had to poke me that many times but it was not fun just it makes me cringe just thinking about it um and then once I and well once I laid down I wasn't allowed to scoot or whatever a lot because I had all that stuff hooked up behind me and if I scooted, they said I could pull it out and I have, we'd have to go through the whole process again. Um, if we were even able to do it again. And uh, so anytime I had to move, they had to, they had this like, they had pads, un like padding under me. Um, for like when I leaked down there, because that was happening. <laughs> I don't like to think about it, not that I'm thinking about it. Uh, but they would always like grab the pad and like scoot me on my side or scoot me this way, that way, whatever. Um, and like change the pad and all that jazz. Um, so anyway, I wasn't allowed to scoot, so they would do that. Also because I wasn't allowed to move and stuff because of trying not to rip out the epidural, they uh, had a catheter in me. If you don't know what that is, it's pretty much a way of, they put it in down there kind of in a tube, and it's a way of you going to the bathroom without knowing you're going to the bathroom. <laughs> you can look it up if you want. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't even know when I had to go to the bathroom, but they'd be like, oh, your bathroom has been full because it's, their catheter's full. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so anyway, that happened. Um, I had people come and visit 
throughout the day. My parents came at some point in there. I don't remember. I think they came right before the epidural. Or they got there like right as the epidural was um, about to happen. So I saw them after that. Um, I don't really remember what happened. Through, well, um, my... It, the first time they did the epidural, they put in the stuff. Um, it numbed... I think my right side was... One of my sides was more numb than the other side. But um, I was numb enough that I wasn't really feeling the contractions that were happening. And they were kind of... I don't know. A decent amount apart. They weren't really uh, consistent. Um, so that was happening. Um, eventually I couldn't feel them at all. Um, but I could kind of feel my legs. Um, it got to the where it started to wear off at one point. And so I asked for some more, and uh, then I could not feel my legs at all. Like, if I didn't know any better, I didn't have legs. They could have chopped them off for all I knew. I could not feel my legs at all. Not that I had to move anywhere, but it was like, it was crazy. Um, so that was a thing. Baby is making noises. <laughs> Silly baby. Um, and then... It got to later at night. My sister got there. Well, anyway. It got to later at night and they kept checking me. I still wasn't... My contractions weren't any closer together. Um, I was dilating more. Eventually. And, uh... My sister got there, like, right as I was getting ready to push. And I thought she was going to stay in there. I was okay with her staying in there, but she didn't. Um, she came in and, like, said hi and stuff and then went back out. Um, as they started to get ready to have me push, because one of the doctors, was, well, a couple times, they, well, one time, and they had me, like, practice pushing, and then, um, the nurse was like, okay, we're gonna, a little bit later, was like, okay, we're gonna have you practice pushing again, and she's like, you know what, because they were just waiting for, like, I was dilated far enough, but I wasn't, I forget what the word was, but there was something else that I needed to be, and it wasn't. It needed to be at like a one or two, and it wasn't. It was still at like a one or like a zero or something. Um, I don't think it's a faced. I don't know what it's called. But anyway, she ended up just solving that problem. I don't really know how to explain it, but she fixed. She figured it, like, had me push, and then kind of got that solved somehow um, by sticking her hand in there and stuff. So that happened, and then. Um, I'd like to say it kind of went fast from there, because in my mind it almost did, like in a way. But my mom was in there, and Brett was in there, and they decided to have me start pushing. So it was my mom and Brett and the OB doctor person that had broken my water, um, and who I'm actually going to have an appointment with Thursday. I'm going to have to check my thing. It might have said tomorrow. I'll have to check. Um, but anyway... She was there, and then the nurse, um, so it was like the four of them, <laughs> Brett was like to my right, to my left, over here, and my mom was like further down, um, also on my left, but, uh, closer to, she, more in a spot where she could see down there, um, and then the nurse and the doctor were down there, nurse and uh, midwife lady, OB person, um, and so Brett was giving me ice chips throughout, and my mom was just kind of there trying to give me support. And they were giving me, the nurse and doctor were giving me support. Um, and I pushed, and I was having like three minutes between contractions, which was super annoying. Because I would push, and then like I'd feel, like even got to the point where I was like feeling her down there. I could feel that, I, like not with my hands, but I could feel that she was part of, like her head was part of the way out. And I couldn't push for like another three minutes, and it was painful, and I just wanted her out, and I just wanted the whole process to be over. My mouth was dry, they were giving me oxygen, uh, on and off, and it was just, like, I wasn't getting to where I, I didn't feel like I couldn't breathe, but they were giving me oxygen just in case, and it was just not a fun situation. <laughs> I almost cried a couple times, because it was just so stressful and frustrating, and... Yeah, I pushed for like an hour, I think it was like an hour and two minutes or something. A little over an hour. And then she finally came out. It felt like forever. But she finally came out. <laughs> and she was good. Um, they put her on me and she pooped on me. <laughs> which didn't bother me at all. I was like, whatever. 
<laughs> I was just happy for it to be done. I didn't cry. I, Brett didn't cry, but I was just happy for it to be done. Um, and she still had her, all her stuff on her, but they put her on me and she pooped on me. And then they moved her away because uh, she had some fluid in her lungs. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. I wasn't worried about it because I'd heard of that being a thing. They could have fluid in their lungs when they're born and like they just have to get all that out and not a big deal. So I was like, okay, that's fine. So they went and took her away and brought her back and uh, had her on me again and uh, kind of sat there. A couple people came in and looked at her family-wise. Um, and then they kind of, well, and then my dad brought me uh, two fish sandwiches because I hadn't had fish my whole pregnancy of any sort, um, except for very early on, before we had even told people, um, I had shrimp at like my grandma's birthday party in February or something. Um, I had like a shrimp thing that was really good, but that's like the last fish thing I had, I had, had during my pregnancy, uh, up until after I had her. So my dad gave me, got me two fish sandwiches, they got me a pop, Mountain Dew, and uh, actually I think they got me two. And, uh, so I had that, Brett was kind of giving me, uh, drinks of the pop, and I was trying to eat the sandwich, and, uh, they kind of got to where they were taking care of her, uh, people came in and checked, and then they eventually, everybody left, and we got moved into a different room, and I was, I could hardly, I was... I don't know if I was in pain or if I was just still numb at that point, but I couldn't hardly walk because uh, I was, I think because I was numb, like partly numb down there and it did hurt. Uh, so they had me go to the, I don't know if they had me go to the bathroom before I moved rooms or after, I don't remember, might have been before, I forget, but uh, they took me holding her in a wheelchair to our new room. And got us all set up. I went to the bathroom. They told us, or they kind of told me, um, the process of going to the bathroom and stuff. We got all that worked out. That was, that was a thing. <laughs> but yeah, I couldn't hardly walk. It was, it was crazy. Um, and they told me not to get up and go to the bathroom without calling a nurse or something. But I think I went that night, that one time they had me go, and I was able to go fine. Um, I don't think I went again until the next morning. <laughs> Um, but luckily I didn't have to go number two for a while, like a day or two, because I had heard that that was really bad, and it was pretty soft when I did go, TMI, I know, but there's that. Um, and then we had been told by Brett's dad that, like, the first night that you have her, or whatever, like, the first night there, um, after having her, and I had had her at, like, 9.15, so we got transferred to our new room at, like, midnight-ish. Um, but he said that, like, they would give, like, the parents, like, a nice dinner, and they'd take the baby, and you could eat, and just kind of, like, relax for a little bit. Well, that didn't happen, as far as, like, the meal didn't happen, and she was taken out of the room a couple times to, like, be checked over. Um, she had a hearing test, she had a bath at one point, um, and just different tests and stuff, and she had, she had jaundice, so she was pricked and stuff a few times taken out of the room done and that done but aside from that she was in there every night um and I was trying to learn to breastfeed which that's why she was in there I think be, at least part of why she was in there because I had to breastfeed her it was the only way she could eat so she was in there and she wasn't sleeping very much she wasn't eating very much uh, or very well she would latch on but then she'd fall right asleep and it was just so frustrating one of the days at the hospital um, they were trying to figure out how to get her to feed, so, um, they would give her, or they would have me try to feed her on each side for 15 minutes, which she, I would try for 15 minutes on each side, but she wasn't drinking very much, because, like I said, she would latch on, and then she'd fall asleep, which was super frustrating. So she drank a little bit, maybe, um, and then they'd have me pump for, like, 15 minutes, uh, both sides for 15 minutes, um, and I was doing that process every ha every two hours. So by the time I'd finished the process um, of feeding her and then pumping, I'd have like a half hour before I had to start the whole thing over again. It was super exhausting and super frustrating and uh, not fun for me. 
and then at night I was try I'd try to feed her I'd try to hold her and stuff she'd fall asleep when I try to feed her and then I try to put her in the in her little thing that they had like pretty much like a bassinet thing and she would start crying and throwing a fit and if I wasn't holding her she'd be crying but I tried to hold her at one point so I could sleep because I was getting like no sleep because of this whole thing and she was crying even when he was holding her and trying to drink from him and uh, so he just ended up giving her back to me and it was just not it was just not fun <laughs> um, and then I got released late Sunday night we I had her Friday night at 9.15 or 9.14 p.m. Um, by the way she was uh, 5 pounds 15 ounces and I think 18 and a half inches long uh, she is now six pounds well, as of this past, as of last Thursday, it's Tuesday now, as of last Thursday, she was six pounds, 14 ounces and 20.25, I think, inches long, something like that. Um, so she's definitely getting weight now. That's good. And the jaundice, I think is fine, gone or whatever. I don't know if it's gone, but it's, it's a fine amount, whatever. Um. Yeah, so she, what was I saying? Um, she was sleeping. Um, oh, because of the jaundice levels, um, we were still there Sunday, and I think they were going to, they told me that I was going to get released sometime Sunday, but they didn't, they might, they said that they'd probably be keeping her until Monday, but they didn't know for a little while, and then eventually mm -hmm. we were told for sure that she was. Um, and they waited until like 11.30, p.m. to officially discharge me because they wanted to still be able to give me my pain meds and after I was like discharged they couldn't give me anything else but I was able to stay until she was discharged so um, they came and gave me my last thing of medicine and like checked me and stuff and uh, gave me like a whole bunch of snacks because they asked if I wanted anything and I was like oh yeah I might take like a pop and then like some kind of bag of chips you can surprise me so she brought a pop like a Mountain Dew and a bag of chips and a sandwich with some condiments and pudding which I actually still have in the diaper bag and a few other things like fruit and stuff um, a bunch of stuff she just gave me a bunch of stuff um, and I was officially discharged but I stayed in the room and stuff and she was still like charged I guess she was still in the hospital officially um, but she got discharged the next day around 12 or 1 something. Um, and so we got all packed up and we left. We came, we stopped here for a moment. And then I went to Kenton for a few days and then came home. And we've been trying to deal with, get rid of the fleas since then. I found a flea, one f tiny flea, um, like a small, a f as far as fleas go, a small one, on my pants yesterday. Before that, I hadn't seen any for a couple days. But we, the cats are in the basement until then. Or until we're done completely with fleas and the laundry in the basement. It's a stress I don't even want to talk about. Um, but she's here and she is doing well. Um, unfortunately, I'm not pumping as much as I'd like to. Um, I would like to be pumping... I try to pump every two hours. So I have to pump in about an hour. Um... But I'd like to be pumping four ounces each time I pump between my two, between both sides. Because um, I pump both sides at once. I'd like to be pumping four ounces altogether. Um, mostly I get it from one side. But sometimes it's only like an ounce and it's super annoying because I do 15 minutes each time and it's just super frustrating. This last time I think I got two ounces. Which, if it's at least two ounces, that's alright. But I'd like it to be at least four um, but yeah, I'll update you on that, but this is probably long enough. That's my birth story or her birth story. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to respond to them and try to get all these videos up. <laughs> all right, I'll see y'all later.